Well, I made it. I'm here. It's the next day. I'm really tired this morning. I don't think I slept that well. A bit headachey, so I've come out for a walk. It's lovely out here. I'm walking up one of the main roads, so um, it's a little bit noisy. There's a lot of tree felling going on here at the moment, so some of the woodland areas that I normally walk in look dreadful. The notice says that the trees are too big and that some of them are diseased. There's a lot of rampant tree destruction going on. Which is slightly depressing. But anyway, I'm here. Two weeks. I have two weeks of A more peaceful environment. It's also a good chance to reset because it's very easy to get kind of set in your ways and complacent when you're at home doing your routine and I like to get away from the place I live because I don't really like it. I live in the middle of a town Like most towns, we suffer from issues with traffic and antisocial behaviour and all the stuff that we all seem to have to deal with now. And it's annoying when it's right outside your windows as well. At least here I can pretend it doesn't exist. Because I don't live near any main roads for a start. But coming out on walks reminds you well, not everyone looks after the countryside. But it is still a nice reminder that there are better places that one day I might get to. work this morning. I, uh, I set up an ISA. I've been putting some money into my new pension, but of course pensions are, once the money's in, it's in. And I don't want to put too much of my savings in because that's my backup funds. So, I also have some just spare savings money, which I've got earning interest on. I also have the start of a car fund for when my car decides to give up the ghost, which hopefully won't be for at least a few years yet. But it is 12 now. And I just want to be sure that I'm going to be able to buy another car. So I've put some money aside towards that and that can grow in savings as well. And I also have my six months emergency fund which is also gathering interest in a high-ish interest easy access account just in case I need it. Although I might put I might put some of it into the ISA. I'll have to see, I need to think about that. The ISA's only uh, I've just set up this morning actually with just small amounts going in every month and then 
I have a couple of fixed bond accounts coming out. Let's go. Let's go this way. Yeah, I have a couple of fixed bonds coming out between April and August. So some of that will go into the pension, some will go into the ISA, and some of it I will hang on to. And maybe I'll take out another fixed bond if, uh, if there's anything worth taking out. They're not looking very good at the moment. The fixed bonds that I'm seeing are paying less than my easy access account. So I might as well leave it there until I decide what to do. We'll see how we get on. So as far as money is concerned... That's things pretty much set up now. And things will now just tick over. The ISA I want to run as a as an additional retirement fund alongside the pension. Now I've been getting conflicting information about pensions, it's very confusing. Because I'm a non-taxpayer, I thought that I could only put in uh, 3,600 a year, including the tax relief from the government, which I only get at 20%. At least until I turn into a taxpayer. But I'm told I'm wrong on that. And that's only for people who are not earning anything at all. So I don't know. But in any case, I don't want to put too many of my savings into the pension because I can't get at that for 20 years. So it was always going to be a lower level fund anyway. And the ISA was the other option. Which of course is accessible money in case I need it. So that's my plan for now. And it's done. And I've done what I can for now with what I've got. So that's one little bit of reset completed. I never take for granted the fact that I get to live in the way that I want to primarily. And certainly when I come down here, I realize how different things can be. It's quite a, I think, for me, a chaotic environment to live in when I'm at my parents. They live a very different life to, life to me. They indulge in lots of news. The TV's always on, the radio's always on, they're always on the news. My mother obsesses about bad news. Um, and so the first thing my dad starts talking to me about when I get down is all the the tragic things going on in the world at the moment. And I said, look, I put a ban on the news last month. I don't do it anymore. So then he starts telling me about it all. And the problem is once you start on those conversations, they spiral. So my mum obsesses about immigration levels, about how we should just send everybody back. And Her obsession or attitude towards it is quite overbearing. It never stops. So I have to find ways to just kind of blank it out. Um, just filter out the worst of it because it can get quite 
a lot to deal with when it's all day, every day. I'm used to being on my own all the time and I love it. And now I have two weeks of 24 seven with other people. And it does really make me appreciate how much I love living on my own. Even though right outside my window, when I'm at home, there are so many things going on that <sighs> kind of intrude. I'd like to be living on my own in a cottage in the middle of nowhere. That's pretty much how I'd like to live, I think. But, you know, you can't always pick and choose. And I've made a lifestyle for myself, which means I don't get to have those things. And there's, that's nobody's fault but mine. But it could be so much worse. And I'm just out getting some fresh air, trying to shift the headache that I've had all morning. Which is probably a combination of that settling into that new environment. Central heating's on, it's quite warm at home. There's a lot of noise that I don't normally have to deal with. Plus I spent about six hours on the road yesterday. So I just need to kind of resettle into the new environment. It happens a lot. If I end up somewhere else that's very different, it'll kick off headaches. And I just need to resettle. I'll be fine. Ever so warm here. Not a breath of wind, so you don't have to put up with wind in my video today. But it's lovely. I'll show you some trees which are sprouting. Look at the lovely trees. walking the outs the um the outer perimeter of the local sports field. It's off the road. Oh wow look at this. Sprouting. Fabulous. I love all the big trees they have here. I mean they are doing some felling and I'll probably end up appearing on a video at some point but um, I'm hoping it's properly managed rather than just hacking back at trees. It looks like a lot of damage and my parents are up in arms about that but if they are diseased trees then they need to be sorted. It's a shame though because some of the trees they've chopped down were trees that I remember from my childhood They've been there all the time that, that I've been alive. And one of them had like, all the kids, all the generations of kids have scratched their names into this tree. And now it's gone. 40, oh, almost 50 years of history. Disappeared. stays the same. Anyway, so this is my arrival video. These are all out of sync, so one of the things that you should never do is tell people where you are on your videos. So I changed my timeline so that by the time you're watching all these, for the most part anyway, I will be back home again. Because if some weirdo finds out where I live back home and decides to use that as an opportunity to break in or something or recognises where I am away down south and decides to track me, I've heard of other YouTubers who've had people turn up at their door 
because they've managed to work out where they live because of what they post. And I know there are people who've recognised where I film, but you can't remove everything. I try to remove signage and things like that that make it really obvious where I am. But one of the risks of the internet is that it's full of weirdos and some people will try to find you for some strange reason. I don't know why. They've got nothing to offer anybody. <laughs> uh, except what you're watching now. It's very strange. There's some very odd people in the world. But here we are. You can see where I am. Greenery as far as the eye can see. It's lovely. Lots of butterflies here. I've seen a whole load of butterflies on the field here. It's really nice. Oh dear, I'm so tired today. Now you can tell I'm getting old. One day on the road and I need a nap. <laughs> Listen to the birds. And the sports cars. Two magpies, joy, and I don't know if you can see this on the on the camera. Probably not. There are loads of wood pigeons on the field. Won't be able to see them. We have so many wood pigeons here. Bug on my shirt. Hey, bug. Come on. You don't want to hang out on me. car again. Round around the block. Follow the tree line back. I'm going to head home. I've been out half an hour, but I just don't have the energy for long walks today. Oh dear. I don't even have the energy to talk today. Just felt that I needed to do a 
I've arrived video just to keep the chronology in place. This is not my most interesting video though. Oh god, I'm so tired. It's crazy because it's almost lunchtime. I feel absolutely washed out. I'm gonna go. This can't be very interesting for you lot. <laughs> Have a good day and I shall catch up with you again soon. Well, I'm sure I shall find something else to talk about. Catch you later.